We have a very busy week ahead with a few extra things in our calendar, and it's these types of weeks that tempt me the most to go through the drive through or pick up expensive restaurant takeout to feed my family. But man, is it pricey. I mean, I think the dollar menu is dead. <laughs> So instead, I went into my Walmart, I picked up $20 worth of ingredients, and in about an hour, I'm gonna be able to prep three delicious meals for my family of five that will feed us all with leftovers. I mean, we're talking probably 20 servings of meals for 20 bucks, so I guess the dollar menu is alive and well here in See Mini Mom's Kitchen. I'm gonna show you exactly what I bought, how I use it to make these meals, so you can do it too. My oldest daughter asked me if I would make chicken and rice casserole this week, and that's actually what inspired the rest of the recipes in this particular meal plan. So I have two boxes of this rice aroni long grain and wild rice cooking, just according to the package directions on the stove behind me. And so I decided that I would just use chicken in all of the meals that I am making, and they all require cooked chicken. I was able to pick up about four and a half pounds of chicken thighs for a little over eight dollars at my Walmart. I was delighted to see that. I dropped those into my crock pot and I seasoned them with a teaspoon each of salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and then a little bit of cracked black pepper. And then I made sure that they were turned over skin side up to slow cook in the crock pot. I cooked mine on high for four hours and they were nice and tender. And even though they are bone in, skin on, it is super, super easy to remove the skin after they have cooked and then take the meat off the bone. And I get the added bonus of having the flavor from the skin and the bone that cooks along with the chicken. And I can use the broth that results to make some things and also save the bones, pop those in the freezer so that I can make another batch of broth later on. So right now I am just shredding up the rest of my chicken thighs. I'm probably gonna get five or six cups of cooked meat from those chicken thighs and then we're ready to put our dinners together. If you were looking for a little more convenience, you could spend a few extra dollars, buy a couple of rotisserie chickens and just take the meat off the bone. Or if you wanted to spend a few more extra dollars, a lot of grocery stores are offering the rotisserie chicken already pulled and in its own little package. On the stove right now, I am cooking my entire two pound box of spaghetti. And once that is cooked to al dente, I'll drain it because I'm gonna use it in the other two dishes. But right now I have my cooked wild rice, two boxes worth of this this rice aroni plus one can of cream of chicken soup or about a cup and a half of homemade if you make it from scratch. I'm gonna stir in one cup or one eight ounce container of sour cream and about a cup and a half, maybe two cups of cooked chicken. And now all I have to do is put this into a casserole dish. Once it cools off, I'll cover it and put it in the fridge. And then when I'm ready to make it tomorrow night, I'll just pop it into a 350 degree oven until it's heated through about 25 to 30 minutes. If you wanted to, before you bake it, you could add a breadcrumb or a cracker topping. For veggies, I'll probably just scour the kitchen for what we have on hand, some steam in the bag veggies, or maybe some green beans from the can. Super easy meal, comfort, food at its best. For the chicken spaghetti, I'm using 16 ounces of spaghetti, cooking that up, so that's half of my two pound box cooked. One can of cream of chicken soup plus one can of milk. I like to season this with some garlic salt and maybe a little Italian seasoning. I'm gonna shred up eight ounces of cheddar cheese. I'm using extra sharp cheddar for the most flavor. And I'm gonna mix in half of that shredded cheese with the noodles, put it into a casserole dish, and then top it with the rest of the cheese. I'm putting this into the fridge for a night or two, and when I'm ready to bake it up, I just pop it into a 350 degree oven until it is heated through. It usually takes about 30 minutes until it is bubbly. This is a kid-friendly recipe. My mom used to make this on repeat because it was inexpensive, it was easy to whip up, it was cheap, and everybody liked it. I am fairly certain that I have shared both of those casserole recipes with you guys before. So if you're seeing them again, my apologies. But I get new viewers to my channel all the time and sometimes a recipe bears repeating because we just forget. But also the most tedious and difficult part of budget cooking is in the planning, in my opinion. It's figuring out how to use a limited number of ingredients across multiple dishes. So I am delighted that I can do that work for you and you can just watch the video and follow the meal plan that I'm making. I will also put together a printable for you guys with my grocery list and with these recipes and I'll leave a link to it over on my website in the description box below. No matter how busy we are, taking care of ourselves, body, soul, and mind is really important. So I 
I want to thank today's sponsor, BetterHelp. They can make starting therapy a little less intimidating for those who are just beginning. And for those of us who are busy and just need a little bit more flexibility, they can offer affordable and accessible therapy options all online. Plus, they're offering 10% off your first month today. With BetterHelp, you just download their app or you visit their website. There's a link in the description box below and you take a little quiz. And this helps them assess your specific needs and goals and also your personal preferences where therapy is concerned so that they can match you with one of their over 30,000 licensed therapists. And because BetterHelp is an online therapy platform where you can set up your sessions via video chat or phone or even messaging, you're not limited to the options that are available just in your own very specific geographical area. It gives you access to a much broader range of options where that's concerned. If you're ready to find out more about BetterHelp, you can visit the link in the description box below or go to betterhelp.com slash cmindymom. And when you sign up, you're going to get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. BetterHelp has a rating on Trustpilot of excellent with an average rating of four and a half stars. And of the over 7,000 reviews left on Trustpilot for BetterHelp, 84% of them are five star reviews. So again, if you want to learn a little bit more or you're ready to sign up, just visit that link in the description box below or go to betterhelp.com slash cmindymom. And thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. My family does still get takeout or go through the drive through occasionally. We eat out sometimes as evidenced by the number of restaurant apps that I have in my phone because if we're going to do it, we're going to order ahead for the convenience so we can just walk in and pick it up. And we're probably also going to look for the best deals and coupons in the apps. Am I right? But let me just open up my McDonald's app because that's nationwide wide. I, I guess actually it's mostly global and just put in like a, like a generic family order from McDonald's to see how much it costs. My kids are mostly past the happy meal stage, but let's just put in two happy meals here. They are $4.69 now, $4.69 for a four piece nugget happy meal. Ruthie's a big fan of the chicken sandwiches. So we'll do one of those meals. And then let's just do a quarter pounder with cheese meal. And let's say that I'm going to order from the value menu and do one of these McDoubles and then a small French fry. My total right now before tax, $26.86. This is why eating out comes from a different line item in our budget from groceries. We don't spend our grocery money per se on eating out. It comes from a line item called recreation. This is entertainment. It's something special. We don't need it. So when times have been tough, we can actually cut that whole line item and redirect it somewhere else. Especially since there are so many meals I know I can whip up at home for a fraction of that price. I mean, I'm making three meals for my family for less than it would cost us to go through the McDonald's drive through tonight. Speaking of eating out for fun and as recreation, we took the kids to a hibachi grill a few weeks ago and they were remarking on how much they liked the noodles. And I know that I can make something similar here at home. So I'm going to serve the rest of the chicken that I made up with some hibachi style noodles that I'm making with the rest of the spaghetti and some veggies. To my big skillet, my seven quart rondo, I added two tablespoons of butter, melted that, and then I sauteed a couple tablespoons of minced garlic for about a minute before I added my bag of frozen mixed stir fry veggies. I specifically chose this one because it has the little mini corn on the cob. Is that what they're called? Yeah, baby corn cobs because my kids say they really like those. And I really like water chestnuts, which are also included in this one. But there were a few different kinds of stir fry veggies in my Walmart. Those have been sauteing on their own for probably six or seven minutes now. I'm gonna add my noodles. This is a pound of thin spaghetti cooked. And I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of this sesame oil over the top, probably two or three tablespoons, and just toss it to make sure that the noodles are coated. Now I'm adding a quarter cup of soy sauce, one to two tablespoons of sugar, I'm gonna add just a little garlic powder, like maybe half a teaspoon or so. And also a few shakes, maybe half a teaspoon, quarter to half teaspoon of this ground ginger. 
And this is a teriyaki sauce. I actually made this from scratch. It was super easy. It was four ingredients, water, soy sauce, honey, and cornstarch. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And I'm adding probably about three tablespoons of that. I'm just going to toss this to make sure that all of the ingredients are combined, incorporated, mixed really, really well. And as soon as the noodles are heated back through, it's ready to serve. I'm going to top each heaping bowl of noodles with some of the chicken that I cooked this afternoon. And that'll be dinner tonight. Really easy and super fast to throw together. I try not to use the word healthy or the word unhealthy very often because it's, those are such broad general terms and they mean something different to everybody. I think there are some people who feel their best when they are following a mostly vegetarian or even vegan lifestyle. And then there are others who really like the lower carb, higher protein, including animal protein diet. For me, when I'm trying to feed myself and my family a little bit healthier, that means increasing fruits and vegetables, it means maintaining balance, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and it also means that I am preparing as much of my meals and as many of my meals as possible at home. You've already seen some of this with the hibachi noodles that I made because I made sure that I was using lots of vegetables in the dish and I made the sauce from scratch, including the teriyaki sauce. But if I'm following my own personal standards for making something healthier, let me tell you some changes I might make to the other two casseroles that I made. Where the chicken and rice is concerned, I would add some vegetables. And this could be as simple as just tossing in some peas and carrots or a bag of broccoli florets. I think also chopping up some carrots and celery and sauteing those things, maybe cooking them along with the rice would work. Or you could maybe substitute one of the boxes of rice with a bag of riced cauliflower. I know my Aldi carries this in both an unflavored and a flavored version. Walmart has it as well, and I'm actually using that a lot to bulk up my lunches. It's a really easy mix-in for lots of different dishes. I also might consider swapping out some of the sour cream for plain Greek yogurt. If I'm doing that, I would probably make it the whole milk or the full fat Greek yogurt instead of the non-fat. And I'd probably stick with just half. I find that if I swap out too many ingredients, I'm making something completely different. I'm changing the taste and texture of the dish and my family's more likely to notice. Whereas if I just swap out half the rice, if I just swap out half of the sour cream for the plain Greek yogurt, then it, maintains a lot of the flavor and a lot of the mouthfeel of the original dish, but I'm still making an upgrade to it and adding a little bit more nutrition. With both the chicken and rice and the chicken spaghetti dish, you can make this from scratch, cream soup. In fact, I do that all the time. That's my preferred way to make it because it's so easy and it doesn't take that much longer than just opening up this can. I don't use the method though that makes a roux with butter and flour and then you add the milk to make a white sauce and then you add the seasoning. I don't go that route. I just put in a pan, cold, three quarters of a cup of broth, three quarters of a cup of milk, and three tablespoons of cornstarch. And I just whisk that as I turn the heat on. As it heats up and begins to simmer, it will begin to thicken, and then I can season it however I like. A little bit of salt and pepper, some garlic powder, onion powder. I've even used some everything but the bagel seasoning before. That will make about one can's worth of cream soup, and it's so easy and quick, and to me, it just tastes better, and it works better in the recipe. It's easier to incorporate. The other thing I can do with the chicken spaghetti to add some vegetables vegetables is add some spiralized zucchini, some zoodles, if you will, or I could add in, you know, some mixed vegetables. I might swap out the pasta for a whole wheat pasta. I also think if you need to eat gluten-free, this recipe works just fine with gluten-free pasta or with lots of different varieties of gluten-free pasta. You would just have to cook those according to the package directions before you put them into your casserole. If you like budget cooking and meal plans, I recommend checking out this video here. YouTube's gonna pick out one it thinks you want to watch right here. I'll catch you in the next one.